here. Okay. Basically, so these three pieces help create those channels uh -huh. that in between your muscle bellies. So you're gonna have better control of the prosthesis. Okay. But, so these are casting jigs. And as I was explaining to the patient, these basically help create channels and you can see those uh, muscle channels. And so that is what we're looking for and they can have good control and proprioception with their prosthesis. And so you got this first piece, this is going to go right on the front and that creates your scarpus. You got this medial channel that goes right underneath that sit bone, that ischium ramus. And then this last piece, this is just that lateral channel and you can see it has a little curve at the bottom here. So you place that behind their femur, just proximal, just above that cut end of the femur and you have your built-in distal femur relief right there. So the leg part just sucks up in there or? What do you mean? The, it's used as suction to keep the leg on? To keep the leg on. So we typically use, it's called like a lanyard suspension. Uh -huh. So there's a strap that screws into the bottom of this liner. Uh -huh. That will, and you'll see during the, when you see me next time for the check socket, we'll go over how that works. Will the thing ever get loose or you have to readjust the ring? So not at the strap. So the strap, once you're locked in, um, sometimes I'll have patients stand up and then just check that strap uh -huh. once they kind of get settled all the way in. And then over time, if you ever drop down in volume, and the actual socket is loose or twisting or anything like that, uh -huh. we can add either pads into these channels or put on like a sock basically uh -huh. to take up some of that space. <laughs> right? Uh <-huh>. <laughs> <laughs> no need to clean the house just to get a, make a mess and have uh -huh. to clean it all over again. So, and you said turning nine? Or yeah. you got gotcha. Almost in the double digits. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah. Any other questions for me while we're waiting for that? Does the foot, does it move? So the foot, it doesn't like actively bend or anything like that. Okay. But it, it's a carbon fiber foot. So just in the nature of the material, it does flex. So you are gonna be able to feel it have some give. Um, so it's not like you're walking on with like a brick. Like <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it will have some motion to it to help you with that walking be a little more fluid, but it's not going to like have a like hinge a or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm going to be able to get used to it. Yeah, everything that I've seen so far and especially the I'll do the exercises that, that I need to do with it. Yeah. Like you said, I'm going to say it first standing. Uh, 
Well, and it just depends on how the check socket fitting goes, because probably what we'll do is we'll take a look at how you're feeling and we'll do some standing, we'll do some exercises standing, the same exercises that you'll be doing once you get the leg. Okay. And then we'll also be doing some walking. That's yeah. when I feel so careful there, we would come back. <laughs> yeah. And they said that you were gonna call them. When yeah. Ready. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, he already, Eddie sent me an email saying, hey, let us know when she's ready. So yeah, we'll keep them up, up to date. Yeah, they get. They said I think that's my second day. So I already knew it. Yeah, cause you're pretty independent already. Just doing anything that you want. So. I will do whatever I can. I even right. drove the other day. Yeah. <laughs> my daughter was really sleepy and yeah, she was a little bit on the, off the road and stuff. And so whenever she went to her friend's house, I just scooted on over there. Okay, gotcha. I said yeah. I'm driving. Yeah. <laughs> You can't drive. Why? I got one. Well, you day. got the right side. I so. got the hands. I got my house. <laughs> yep. That's all I need. Yeah, because even um, you know, even patients that have the right side amputated, they'll learn to use their left foot. Or I have um, a bilateral patient right now uh -huh. that has the hand controls for yeah. for doing everything. So. That has to be a lot of get used to. Um, yeah, try and control everything with your hands. Yeah, it's I've been his foot still or his leg still right. Yeah, mash the pedals. Yeah, I know mine would. <laughs> I'd probably forget. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's why partly why you know in the beginning I was telling you, you know, just have something by your bed or just remember have something uh -huh. if you ever do wake up in the middle of the night. Yeah, my wheelchair is right there, it yeah. reminds me. Yeah, it's like I said, once you get it, everything on there, <laughs> it goes pretty quick. So. And so when I first started doing this, um, I would take this and pour it and do my mods. With this, I'm not even doing any plaster modifications. We'll be building our ischial seat and scanning and sending it off and a 3D printed uh, check socket will come back to us. Really cool thing about this system is everything, yes, I'm being intentional where I'm placing those pieces, but it really does a nice job of conforming to the patient's individual anatomy. So when it comes to building in your containment, so basically think of this pen as ischium ramus of your pelvis, where I put that piece during casting, her ischium ramus is gonna be sitting right where this pen is. So a couple things to keep in mind, how open is that angle? It's gonna be more open for females than males. You're also noting how broad or narrow that containment needs to be. You're also gonna note the exit angle and the last thing you're going to note it, note is how much medial containment can you get so when i look at this cast i know exactly where my fingers were and how they were positioned around her ischium ramus so i know what that seat needs to look like so this is where you kind of get to go back to middle school, elementary school art class when it comes to building in your initial seat. I've done, um, I've used plaster splint, I've used a fiberglass splint, I've used Play-Doh, molding clay, things like that. Thing that I've been using lately though that I've found is really easy to work with and has good results is actually just the inside flap of a the side of a cardboard box. Make sure that looks correct, or I'll have it in the position that I was casting her so I can, you know, confirm. Yeah, that's where my hands were. Those angles are correct. And the last thing to get it ready before we scan. Early on, one of the things I would notice consistently in the check sockets I would get back from scanning was gapping over this rectus femoris channel. Uh, I mean, tissue's gonna go somewhere. So what I've done since then is basically slit down that rectus femoris channel. So we got that cut and we're just gonna overlap it. And I just take two push pins to hold that in place. Other common thing, space and non-contact at the distal, me distal medial. So what I'll do on the cast is basically just like cut an X pattern and go ahead and just kind of push that in. So that will reduce 
some of that distal non-contact medially. So we got those adjustments made. We got the ischial seat. We got our alignment line. So we're gonna go ahead and scan this. I'm not gonna do any changes to the scan. I'm just going to instruct them to smooth out this lateral channel, um, smooth out this area, and then just follow the cast for trim lines. And I know I've already done like a scan in another video, but here is basically what the transfem scan uh, looks like. And uh, next video in this series, we will be fitting the check socket. So I will catch you then.